My name is Anoki Jambasaria and I'm a dermatologist at Mayo Clinic in Florida. Skin cancer is any type of malignant growth that happens in the skin. It can be broadly defined into two main kinds. There's melanoma and then there's non-melanoma skin cancer. And within non-melanoma skin cancer, the two most common types are basal cell cancers and squamous cell cancers. Now basal cell cancers are the most common cancer diagnosed in any organ worldwide. So it's more common than breast cancer, lung cancer, or even colon cancer. Squamous cell cancer is the second most common cancer diagnosed worldwide, and the majority of patients will have basal cell or squamous cell cancer. So usually, people will notice a new growth or something changing on their skin, and that will be the first thing that they may notice about a skin cancer. Typically, these tend to be asymptomatic, meaning that they don't cause any symptoms to you. Um, sometimes they will bleed and sometimes they may be a little bit painful if you press on them. So we know that having multiple blistering sunburns can be associated with having a higher risk of melanoma in particular, but having one individual, what we call bad sunburn, we haven't been able to prove that that's been, able to, that's been associated with having a higher risk of skin cancer. We know for sure that sun sun exposure is very important and we think it's the sun exposure that you may have had as a child as opposed to sun exposure you had later on during adulthood that may play a greater role. We also think that your genes are important as well and there might be some genetic predisposition to getting skin cancer as well. So there are certain groups of patients that are more likely to get skin cancer. We know that people who are very fair for example, people who tend to burn very easily before they tan are at higher risk. Typically, these people tend to have blue eyes and red hair. Um, but there are also, we also see skin cancer in darker individuals such as Hispanics or East Asians or African Americans, albeit at much lower numbers. So really, anybody can develop them. Where you live, um, plays an important role in your risk of developing skin cancer. So we know that the ultraviolet rays, which are the rays that, are, that we think cause skin cancer, are strongest closer to the equator and become weaker the further you get away from the equator. So obviously if you grew up in Florida, your risk of getting skin cancer is much higher than if you grew up in Maine, for example. Altitude plays an important role as well. So people who spent many years living at high altitude tend to get more ultraviolet light exposure than those living at sea level or lower altitudes. So these are some things that you should keep in mind when trying to determine your baseline risk for skin cancer. We recommend that all people as they go through puberty and enter adulthood should be screened by a dermatologist for a baseline risk assessment. And the dermatologist, based on your history of sun exposure, um, by asking you a family, whether or not you have a family history of skin cancer will recommend the frequency at which you should follow up. There are some patients that we see on an every three to six month basis and there are some patients who we see on a biannual basis. So it really depends on an in the individual's risk and that's something that you can have a discussion with when you go to see your dermatologist.